COVID had impacted a lot of industries, right? So how did it affect the real estate industry particularly? So if you look at real estate as a sector, it is the backbone of Indian economy. Right. It's going to be about a trillion dollar economy by 2030. That's a significant number. And what COVID has done is COVID has, has increased the stress points. Yeah. Hi, Prabhat. How are you doing today? Very good, Mohit. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this uh, conversation. Right, right. Before we, you know, start with the session, uh, you know, I would like to set the context and the pace of discussion today. Uh, today, we'll be talking about prop tech. Like, is it the new growth catalyst in the real estate, uh, residential real estate sector, right? So today we have Mr. Prabhat Kumar Jwadi. He is an alumnus of Stanford Business School with over 26 years of experience in SKP in technology, enterprises and startups. Right. He is also the founder, CEO and CMD of uh, Your Own Room, which is a PropTech residential real estate uh, asset management firm. Right. So Your Own Room's asset manage under management is 1 million square feet uh, over uh, valued at over 50 million across Bangalore and Pune. So before we get into the set of questions uh, we have, uh, I would like to know more personally about your journey, like how your journey has been and, you know, how you came up with you with or started with the form, right? If you can shed some light over there, it will be great. Sure. So if you if you look at my background, uh, my background has primarily been in the corporate world. Uh, I graduated from BIT Mestra, did my computer science, and then post that, I've always been working for various technology companies. Um, and most recently, I was running PNL for large organizations. I was a senior vice president for exchanging, running a $30 million PNL. Thanks. But throughout my experience, I always wanted to do something which is more closer to my heart, something where I could create a larger impact and something which is more, you know, something which is uh, more obvious, evident, and you can touch and feel. And Thanks. real estate as a space was something which is right there. The minute you're out of your house, you're out of your office, you see real estate. And I always could see that there were just too many stress points, both from a supply side and demand side. And I said, let me solve this using technology. And that's how my entire uh, journey started about six years ago. And then since right. then, there's been no looking back. And uh, I'll talk more about my journey, you know, as we speak. Right. So one thing that interests me is you graduated from Stanford, right? So how how did you decide that, you know, now you want to, you know, do, do masters or probably learn more and join a program, right? Uh, you know, while you were uh, working or how, how, how did the thought of it came or how did it start? So, so I was with HP when I decided uh, to go to Stanford and uh, I had actually worked in the U.S. also for about seven years. Okay. So one, one thing which I realized is that I had a certain aspiration. I wanted to make a switch from being more of an engineering manager or engineering senior manager to becoming a business leader. And I knew that uh, you have to change your perspective and way of looking at things. And that's where I thought maybe... You know, it's a good time, uh, take a step back, go back to some good business school, learn and come back. And I was just lucky that I got through Stanford. And of course, I did have a couple of more options like LBS and Oxford, etc. But uh, the intent here was that go back to a good business school, take time off, spend a year, uh, learn new things, come back and then apply it in whatever form you want. So that's how the journey uh, happened. Right. That's quite interesting, you know, uh, to be honest. Uh, that's that's great, right? Now, you know, uh, we'll start with the very first question. Like, uh, can you give me an overview of the residential real estate industry size and market dynamics, right? I'm sure, you know, COVID had impacted a lot of industries, right? So how did it affect the real estate industry particularly, right? So if you can shed sure. some light over it. So if you look at real estate as a sector, it is the backbone of Indian economy. Right. It's going to be about a trillion dollar economy by 2030. That's a significant number. In fact, in the next two to three years, real estate is going to be a $650 billion market, which basically means it will be almost one sixth our GDP and it will generate about 75 million jobs. Right. So, this, so this is a very significant industry as such, which contributes to our economy. Right. The second uh, thing over here is, 
If you look at residential real estate market, this is where we operate. It's almost a $13.5 billion market just in urban India. The total is about $20 billion, including rural, so you get that out. And what's interesting is that it's all fragmented, unorganized. And if you combine the market share of all the organized player, it is just 5%. It's like, you know, organized retail maybe 20 years ago. That's the state in which we are. Right. right. The second thing is there is serious uh, financial distress because of unsold properties, uh, properties that are under various stages of construction. So this supply, which is coming at a certain speed and of a certain type, but the demand is not really catching up and there's a bit of a mismatch and that's creating significant stress. So just to give you a sense, there are close to about uh, 0.6 million or about close to 6.4 lakh properties which are ready and sold worth 50 billion. Then okay. there are another close to a million properties worth almost 100 billion which are under various stages of construction. Okay. Then there is a lot of vacant homes. There are about 11 million vacant homes. So basically, there's significant stress that exists in the market. One big uh, shift that is happening is that investors are now looking at this not about just owning a physical asset. They're looking at this as a financial product. And a financial product basically means they're looking at capital appreciation of the asset and rental yield of the asset. And there are a lot of interesting things that have happened in the recent past in the real estate world, like RERA and Model Tenancy Act. One has fixed the relationship between developer and owner, and the other has fixed between owner and tenant. So a lot of good stuff going on uh, in this particular space. And what COVID has done is COVID has, has increased the stress points. Uh, it, has, um, it has brought out a lot of uh, issues that already ex existed. It just accentuated them. And one thing is very clear with COVID that technology is going to be play, playing a very critical role as things evolve in this particular space. And that is where uh, technology is going to be used for buy and sell, it's going to be used for rentals, it's going to be used for asset management, and so on. And we are very lucky that we have positioned ourselves as a prop tech player in the rental property management space during this particular time. Correct. Interesting. So like you mentioned, like technology is playing a pivotal role, uh, not just in real estate industry, but across industries. And I believe it, it, it is here to stay, right? And the second aspect of it as well, like you said, the government is also taking a lot of initiatives in order to, you know, boost the economy and, and overall market dynamics, right, of this industry. So that's pretty interesting. And, you know, the, the industries, uh, you know, I can see uh, it, it going uphill from here onwards. So now, uh, you know, that brings me to my next question. You touched upon this a bit, like what are the challenges faced by consumers and how are the needs evolving? I'm sure you have been in the industry since past so many years and you yourself have uh, noticed you might have noticed that you know there are a lot of changes which are there in customers perception and things like that so how are the needs evolving if you can shed some light over there? see first is that the uh, the infrastructure in cities continues to be a, a challenge because there is a lag between demand that is coming from consumers as well as the rate at which the infrastructure is uh, coming so today if you look at it most consumers still struggle getting safe, secure homes, which are work from home friendly, which are close to their offices. Last mile continues to be a challenge even today. The second thing is work from home is the fulcrum now for home buying and home renting decision. Now that's a big, big shift. People have very clearly realized, especially during COVID and the last two, three years, that life is going to be centered at home and this is where most activities will happen. Whether you work from home, whether you socialize at home, whether you eat at home, and that's where you see Zomatos and Sweeties and so on. And with all development in technologies, in FinTech, in payments, et cetera, it's very easy to just operate out of home. And uh, uh, the other thing is the demand for alternate homes uh, is starting to rise. Now, if you really look at it, homes have always been looked at from a consumer perspective as a home where a family would fit in. But the reality is that there are multiple formats of consumers. For example, you have students, you have uh, singles who probably can share properties, then there are families, and then there are seniors. Okay. So what is happening is the demand is coming from all the various segments in different, different form. And of course, from our perspective, we focus heavily on co-living and 
uh, families. So we look at these two segments, but the reality is that there's demand coming from all these various sectors or all these demography, which basically means that there's also supply getting created to ser service this particular demand. So yeah. there are asset owner owning companies, developers, investors, who are now begin, beginning to partner with operators like us and others to ensure that the right uh, assets are being built and they are all being operated to service to this particular stuff. And one last thing is, if you look at interest rates, uh, interest rates, especially housing interest rates, repo rates, they're at a historic low. And when you have these rates coming down, obviously buying just goes up. So there's suddenly, if you see, there's an increase in sales and most of the statistics are pointing to that. Correct. Correct. Very true. Very true. Right. So, you know, uh, now that brings me to my next question that what is the solution that you are offering and how is it different from other key players who are out there in the market? Right. So if you can, uh, you know, highlight the key aspects of it. So if you look at us uh, as a company, your own room, we are basically a PropTech residential real estate asset management company. Now, our vision is basically to deliver better economic returns to the asset owner. And the second, deliver better living experience to the consumers who stay in these assets. And all this is being done through various, what I would call prop tech based uh, asset management solutions and services. Okay. So first, what we do is we offer managed co-living homes and family homes to singles. Okay. Uh, and family. And these are safe, secure, convenient, uh, no last mile problems and work from home friendly. The second is, we basically become the custodian of the asset for homeowners as well as uh, you know developers or large asset owners okay. and what we do is we manage these assets so we're providing professional rental and property management for them and we are helping them get continuous cash flow and rental yields and higher capital appreciation which basically means we're giving them better economic returns for their investment Correct. and, uh, and uh, if you look at it uh, there are many players today in the market uh, and um, if you look at uh, some of the ways that we try to differentiate ourselves, there are two, three ways we differentiate. First is our tech platform. Now, this is something that we've built over the last six years. All our learnings, especially around operational excellence, around automation, around customer engagement is all encapsulated into this particular prop tech platform, which is like a full blown ERP. Uh, and this gives us the option to scale profitably across new cities, across new services, and so on. The second is, uh, compared to many of our competition, we focus heavily on good assets. And what we feel is, you get the right asset, you solve solved 80% of the problem. And this is one place we are able to differentiate. We, we, uh, we uh, basically have this whole concept of what we call golden properties, which are essentially you know, A-grade properties. And that constitutes almost 70% of our portfolio. The third thing which we are trying to do is we are establishing large partnership with developers and uh, what we call PropCos. These are companies that own assets so that we become their operating company. So these three are our big differentiators, which is basically going to propel growth for us in the future. Correct. Correct. So one aspect is very interesting that you have the technology which is there, which is which you have been building up since past uh, six years or so, right? You said so that that I believe gives you a, a added advantage. And you also told that you know seventy percent of your portfolio is is golden properties, right? So there might be certain checks and balances that you might have developed over the past couple of years, which you know gives you gives you a head start as compared to other peers who are out there in the market, right? So that's Absolutely. pretty interesting. Right? Absolutely. In fact, if I can just add on the technology, see today, I think the question is, uh, what is the role of technology in the prop tech world? And I think that there is still a little bit of uh, lack of understanding in the market. Now, people think that just finding a tenant is a technology solution, right? And, and, in, and to me, that's a very narrow and a shallow way of looking at things. Because if you look at technology, technology is about making sure that A, the property is listed, A, it's ready from all perspective, which means all repairs, maintenance are done. It is listed on a platform. People can see that. People can go and visit it. Then there are agreements being made. And, and these are all digital agreements. There is KYC process. Then it's about getting tenant into the property. It's about raising invoices. It's about giving the tenant the option to make various payments uh, through various payment gateway, reconciling those payments against the invoices, raising service requests, 
uh, raising complaints, getting audits done, getting transfers done from one property to the other property, getting a renewal done. So if you really look at it, it's a complete nine yards that needs to get covered all the way from managing tenant life cycle to asset life cycle, to owner life cycle, to operations, to invoicing, to payments and so on. So it's like, I mean, I would urge uh, you to look at this more as a full-blown ERP solution and with all kinds of integration with a CRM system, with a uh, payment system, with a banking system, with Google APIs and so on. Correct, correct. That's just quite interesting. So you have developed a whole ecosystem which is out there and functioning, you know, and looking care, uh, taking care of all the different aspects which are out there right away, starting from, you know, tenant management to, to owner and rental agreements and so on and so forth, right? That's okay. interesting. So, you know, how has the last financial year been and uh, what have you achieved in the industry? Like? So last, uh, last year has been a fairly good year for us. Uh, we are now beyond the pandemic and that gives us a little bit of, uh, you know, gives us a lot of confidence. We grew significantly in 21, 22. Uh, as you mentioned uh, in my introduction, our asset under management is about a million square feet valued at about 400 crores or $50 million. Uh, there are about close to 2000 beds, both uh, Bangalore and Pune. We exited the year with an annual revenue run rate of close to 10 crores or about one and a half million. We focused heavily on profitability and cash flow management over the last two years. And we are now at a point where uh, at an operational level, we are positive, And at an EBITDA level, we become positive in the next three to four months. Uh, what we also did was we expanded our portfolio during COVID. So uh, we were always into residential rentals for co-living and family. We went beyond uh, into property management, you know, which is a physical upkeep of the property, uh, both single units as well as multiple units. And uh, that's, uh, that's something which has become about close to one fifth of our entire business. Today, I, I feel very confident because we're sitting on an order book of close to 70 crores or $10 million. And we have a very uh, healthy sales pipeline of 350 crores. There are almost about close to few, uh, four to five large contracts which uh, we have closed, uh, which will give us uh, uh, you know, maybe a combined revenue of 350 crores over the next few years. Uh, so this has been uh, you know, our journey over the last one year. Quite interesting figures that or the stats that you've presented, like the sales pipeline of 350 CR is just massive, right? And, you know, I'm pretty confident that, you know, it will materialize very soon, right? So, uh, you know, where do you position yourself in the next three years or so maybe? See, we are now at a point where I think we have all the building blocks in place. Uh, uh, you know, we kind of, uh, we've made our entire system very battle-hardened. And I think that has been the biggest learning for us especially during uh, COVID. And what we realize is that uh, that these kind of shocks in the form of COVID or maybe a Ukraine war, et cetera, you know, is going to happen in the future too. So you need to build a business that can sustain some of these things. Correct. We feel good about it, that we are at least, we have made it battle hardened. Uh, we are now transitioning from being just a rental and property management company, a prop tech rental property management company to becoming a prop tech residential real estate asset management company, which means that we are we are looking at uh, you know all kinds of partnership with other operators, smaller operators, you know various propco companies, etc., so that we are able to handle large inventory. So growth is going to be our cornerstone uh, when it comes to our strategy moving forward. Uh, we are looking at a goal, a revenue goal of fifteen crores or two million dollars for the coming year, which is twenty two twenty three. And what we like to do is we like to increase our uh, penetration in both Bangalore and Pune in chosen micro markets. And we like to start adding new cities at the backdrop of partnerships. So as I said, uh, our partnership with Propcos, or which is property uh, owning companies and developers and corporates is going to be very, very critical as we focus on growth in the coming years. Uh, we are beginning to take an account view. We are aligning some of our senior leaders to some of these accounts so that we are able to build a relationship with these accounts, solve the problem, and more importantly, deliver on our promise. And um, our biggest uh, differentiator is our PropTech platform, which we have built over the last several years. We now intend to make it multi-asset. We are also uh, making it SaaS enabled. We are doing a bit of a UI UX revamp. So basically, we want to make sure that uh, we are preparing our platform for the next five years. 
and uh, that's how we're kind of investing in our platform we're also uh, at this point uh, in the midst of raising our pre series a investment round we have some firm commitment from a couple of investors and hope to logically close it in the next few weeks and uh, all this is mainly to fuel growth uh, to focus on sales marketing and our tech platform correct correct that's quite interesting uh, the the conversation mm-hmm. that i had today was pretty insightful mm-hmm. and you know that brings me to you know end of uh, questions from my end so it has been a lovely discussion and you know i personally got to learn a lot of new things about the this this market that you are operating in right the the overall uh, aspects and you know bits and pieces uh, how how you club it together and you know make a form right so it has been a pretty interesting conversation with you prabhat uh, thanks a lot it was a pleasure having you here uh, with startup story so thank you so much uh, mohit uh, and the startup story team uh, uh, it's a great opportunity for me to share our journey learnings and our plans and uh, take uh, take care thank you so much thanks a lot thank you